Hey you and welcome to my channel, my name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. Welcome back to part 2 of this walrus drawing. If you haven't seen part 1 and you would like to check that out, I'll put the link in the description as well as have it appear on your screen. If there is any subject you would like me to cover, make sure to let me know in the comments below. In this video I'll cover the mouth area and the fangs as best as I can, so let's go! As you've seen by now, I started by adding some soft pastel for my underlayer. I use a more cool brown in the center area and for the edges where there is more depth to the walrus, I went for a more reddish tone. Also keep in mind that I keep my layers as light as possible so I still see where those whiskers need to come. Now the first thing I start with is to block in these half circles with black. I'm using this color to make sure it's very visible and this will create the shade above the start of the whiskers. The spots at the top part of the area can be dots as there will be no whiskers coming from there. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see what I mean when I say half circles. I also tap them a little bit to mute them, but that's about it before I add the whiskers. For this I start with ivory to put the markings in. As you can see these are small, more thick strokes the same way they look on the picture. You also need to follow the curve of the mouth to give them a realistic look. Then for the rest I'm going to use a slightly darker color as the area where the ivory whiskers are is more on the left highlighted side. I also make the stroke shorter as I move more towards the top of the mouth. Again like with so many other things this isn't rocket science so don't worry about perfect shapes and positions, this isn't necessary. As I move over to the right side I'm going to add some more wrinkles there. Again I'm using a black for this. I'm kind of laying them on in a crisscross pattern where I want to display a lot of folds. And then for the right side I'm doing the same thing but on a larger scale. In the end result you won't see a lot of these lines showing through but they'll definitely add to the realism. For the next part I'm just repeating the same steps I took on the left. I'll simply adjust my colors a bit for the whiskers as this side is in the shade. In the meantime I'm going to put in some shameless self promotion. Be sure to download my ebook to which you find the link in the description. In my ebook you'll find tips and actionable steps you can take to improve your skills. You'll also be signing up for my newsletter this way where you'll receive 4 reference pictures each month you can use as a reference for your own drawings. Let me show you some of the pictures I've already sent out so far. Ok now we've got that out of the way, let's move on to the bottom part and the fangs. I first started by indicating where my fangs come before I put some soft pastel for the middle part. I'm doing this to avoid any of the darker values finding their way into this part since it's such a light part. For the middle part I map out the lips with a black and then I add some brown tones in the middle and a more reddish brown at the bottom. After I blend this out I'm going to go over this with pencils. I started with a rather bright red at the bottom where all the folds underneath the chin are. You'll later see me fix this because it turned out too bright to my liking. The area above was done with a slightly lighter red as well as the black to darken my values up some more. So as I blended this out I realized this was too bright. To fix this I lightly glazed over the area with black. So I'm just adding these very light stripes and then when I blend this out the overall value of this area will be darker. Afterwards I can just darken the chin up a little bit more. And then I'm going to add in the left fang. For this I start with an ivory base and I'm going to darken this up a little bit with a light brown. I switch to the other fang here to get the first layer in. I'll sometimes do things this way to get a better read on the values I want in particular areas I'm drawing. So by now you know that this fang will be in the shade, so I'll use way darker colors for my base. You will see me add in some ivory to lighten it up, but the result is very far from the bright fang on the left. This of course becomes more clear as I blend them out. For the left fang I add in a little bit more ivory so there is a very highlighted stripe on the outer edge of the fang. Then with dark brown I'll add those markings in that resemble the damage to the fang. In the end I will tap them a little bit to make them a little bit more muted. Then for the right fang I'll just darken up the outer edge a bit more before I also add in those small indentings on the side. In this side I'll just make them a little bit darker and more visible because of the lack of light there. And there you have it, this covers the most difficult parts of the walrus. 
If this has been helpful to you, make sure you show me your support by hitting that subscribe button. You'll get extra points if you hit the notification bell as well. You don't want to miss out on future videos now, do you? In the meantime, I started with the underlayer on the right side. Remember, this is the part most in the shade, so I've adjusted my colors for this. I even used black for a large part of the bottom area. For the rest, it's a matter of getting some more of that reddish area right and filling the rest up with a cool brown. I've also used black to indicate wrinkles or folds on that side. And then it's time to blend this out. When it comes to larger areas like this, I love to use the tools from Soft Pastel. I find that with a little bit of practice, you can make these sponges last quite some time. This also could be due to the fact that I'm working on pasta mud, which even though it has a gritty texture, isn't super hard on your materials like some other gritty or sanded papers. And then for the last part of this drawing, I'm simply going to darken up the wrinkles some more. Again, I'm using black for this to make sure my darks are dark enough. And as you can see, when you blend this out, you take away some of the sharpness. I'm also going to lighten up some of the values in the lower part. Now this may seem quite bright, but since this area is covered with lots of dark values, when you blend this out, this will turn out much more darker than it would appear. I also need to add some more light values at the top. You can see where I first blend this with my fingers, it's a little bit too light. All I need to do is go over this with the soft tool I used before, and because of the pastel still on my tool, I'll immediately get a much darker result. To finish this, I'm going to add some small fur markings on the top right side. Again, I'll keep my strokes between the wrinkles, and I'll adjust their direction as I move towards the middle. You don't need to do this for the lower part like we did on the left side. This is because the light does not hit the walrus there, which results in the small fur layer not showing. I'll just tidy some areas up and there you have it. Some small guidance on how to tackle quite a difficult subject, in my opinion at least. If you like this video, let me know in the comments below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate your support as this helps to grow my channel and reach other people just like yourself. Hope to see you again next Friday and in the meantime, have a great week.